Hey all, I just thought I'd share a very quick video on how I set up a chart to uh, keep an eye on a stock over time. This uh, is Elixinol, it came up on one of my you know, scans that I run, um, nothing particularly interesting, just sort of more average volume over a period of time after a pullback. So um, you can see that it's had a fairly good left to right type slope. You know, I like to look at these type of charts where it's been running you know, nicely left to right and there's been a bit of a pullback. Um, the volume is still there and it looks like it's going to start going back up again. So you obviously never know which way it's going to go, but you know, it's up 7% today, which is fairly bullish. Um, so I'll, I, you know, it's a stock that I probably won't trade today, um, but I'll certainly keep an eye on it just to make sure it does perhaps go back up again. So um, what I do is I set up my little toolbar and this toolbar appears when you press this little star button. And to get the tools on it, all you do is you go to the tools that you use more frequently and then you just tick these little, you know, um, I don't know, well, it's an add to favorite star button to the right. So you can see that if I, you know, untick it, it's gone. If I tick it, it comes back. And I can drag them within the toolbar. So I can drag it, you know, left to right. And all I've got here is I've got a toolbar that's for anchored text. So that's text that doesn't move when you, you know, when the chart moves. Um, there's text that does move with the chart. There's a call out box, there's a price range box, there's a trend line box, there's a parallel channel box. Um, there's a horizontal ray and there's a horizontal line and these are the ones that I, I personally use most frequently but you know there's a bucket load of stuff in here that you can use you know you might want price labels you want mark you know arrows up arrows down you know whatever you like you just simply tick that little star and then it appears you know on your little toolbar so it's quite handy so anyway so Elixinol is the stock that I found and so because when you you know save these charts and you print them onto Facebook or um, Twitter, you know, the it's very hard to see the little symbols. I'll go and I'll go ticker. I will not ticker. I'll go fix text and I'll go uh, caps lock elixinol um, global and I'll go uh, exl and asx. Because sometimes I trade US stocks um, and so that's all right. I'll pop him there. Um, something that I've done a little bit before this is I always click on the more and I can then see you know what the stock does. Um, it's a funny thing in TradingView where you can't copy this text here, like you can't cut and paste this, but you can go across into you know the main sort of you know I don't know stock review part of TradingView where you can cut and paste the description. So um, what I'll do is I'll then go to text again, I'll click here, I'll get rid of my background and my border. And I'll change it to you know that color there so it's not quite black. I'll make it say size 12, I'll get rid of the bold, and I'll paste in the description here. And so it says Elixinol Gold is an Australian based company, which isn't really important. The company owns and operates, so I'm going to say it owns and operates. Oh, my caps lock still on. Owns and operates hemp, medical cannabis industries. Um, you know, it's an early stage. medical cannabis business. So I'm going to put a text wrap on it. I'm going to go, I uh, might make it black in fact. No, I'll make it that same color. I'm going to go OK. And then all I do is I drag this up under here and make it the same width as the heading roughly. And so that way when I come back and I have a look at this stock, I can see, you know, what it is. You know, see how it doesn't move. The, I can move the chart around, but I just get this very quick reminder of, you know, what is this stock? I can see it, you know, all the information I want to see on that one screen. So I can see it very quickly, what it is and what it does. Um, the next thing that I do is I like to look for support and resistance type areas. You know, depending on you know how you're trading, and so this one will just do a support and resistance type play. And so all I'll do here is I'll say, well, the high for this particular candle is here. And so I'm going to say, well, let's pretend that this area is a support here. You know, it needs to touch sort of three points. So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, kind of 0.3, goes through here, and you can see that's bottom off there. So I'm going to say that this $4.98 type mark, I'm going to say this could be a good support point. Um, if I double click on it and make it $5, because sometimes round numbers are a better support point, you can see, you know, it's kind of maybe a good area for support for this stock. And then the next thing I like to do is I say, well, where's my resistance? And I'll say, um, going back again to this ray, I'll say, well, let's say that we've got to sort of about this point here, and then the stock, you know, retrace. So if I make that one there, 
and we can make what was the high the high for this day was uh, five dollars that can't be right but the high in that can looks like it was five dollars sixty four but it can't be five dollars sixty four what am I looking at let's go cancel let's zoom into little sucker yeah so you can see the high was five dollars ninety three up here it says five dollars ninety three so let's make this here five dollars ninety three and say that was you know roughly where the you know the high was so it got to there it said hey you know we're you know we think we're a bit overextended and so I'll make this one my resistance point so I'll go style red being bad and I'll go okay and then I want to see what my opportunity is so um, if I basically say um, with this little indicator here if I go from here up to here because I always think that you know stocks that are a good stock you know there's a very good chance that they'll get back to where they were um, and so I can see that there's roughly 18 percent you know it's a little bit less now because it's you know it's, it, the stock's up a bit but um, you know there's, there's sort of 15 percent just to get back to where it was so you can see it's been trading nicely you know left to right um, and it's gotten back up to this point so you know in my mind I think there's roughly a you know 20 percent opportunity somewhere in there you know 18 to 20 percent and to me that's pretty good so you know I, if I was trading this I'd probably set a stop loss roughly around here like I'd, I'd set a stop probably at that four dollars 75 type mark um, and then I'd buy it and I'd let it run you know hopefully up to this um, you know six dollar type mark and then what I'd be really keen for it to do is, is to break through on volume and, and keep running so um, you know this is just you know roughly how I look at some of these stocks so I can then put in things like I can say uh, what happened there didn't click it so I can say um, let's call this resistance or let's call it sorry support support around five dollars now you can see that at the moment I've, I haven't got a text wrap on it so you can click the text wrap on and off and then you know you can change the size of this box if you had more text than it but you know I, I, I'll often just use it without the uh, the text wrapper if there's more text I turn the text wrap on um, so let's go okay and let's just pop it up there and then we'll say um, resistance we'll do another one resistance around it's probably around that you know six dollar type mark which is you know sometimes one of those things where you know stocks do you know trade around um, you know the dollar type point so I might make this one sort of a more red because um, I always think you know green's good red's bad um, I make that black it's not very red is it I think I've got too much of a filter on it so yeah resistance around six that'll do and so whenever I come back to this stock you can see how this text block here doesn't move but this one here does move you know these little blocks they're not they're not um locked to the let's call it the background area um, they'll move around as the stock sort of progresses and then I might say um, if I again if I was to trade it I'd say well let's pretend you know my stop loss is around that four dollar seventy type mark maybe four dollar seventy five if it, if it fell below four dollar seventy five um, so let's go another horizontal array um, and say I don't know four dollar seventy five somewhere around there is um what I might set my stop loss to and so I'll just make that a I don't know make it a blue like that I don't know, might make it a darker blue and so then I'll go and say uh, this one say stop loss around $4.75 and I'll go OK and I'll put that up there and so that's just a very quick way um, that I can move things around so what I might do with this one is I might actually turn this one into a wrap so then I can get it away from this support at $4.75 or support at $5 one I'll put them next to each other so that's there um, so that's kind of a, a you know rough rough easy way to you know set up a chart so that anytime you come back to it when you're going through your little watch list and flicking through stocks you know you can sort of remember you know what your thinking was it's almost a bit like a training diary where you can sort of 
um, go back and revisit a stock later and see if you're right or you're wrong. Um, the other thing I, I sometimes will do is I'll, I, I like the computer to draw my lines. So I'll put in a, um, uh, it's in my favorites, it's, it's a, um, a linear regression line. So I'll put that in there. And so what I like about linear regression is it's getting the computer to draw um, my trend lines as opposed to me trying to draw them myself. Um, and you can see over the 14 days it's sloping up. Um, if I change to say, I don't know, 30 day period, uh, 30 days, as I'm on the daily chart, you can see that you know the stock's been in a fairly good uptrend. And so, you know, I'd like to be able to fiddle with this. And so I can see that at the moment it's right down the bottom of that, you know, orange band. And so, you know, it's a good time to buy because I think that represents value. Um, you know, if it's towards the bottom of this, um, then there's a good chance it will, you know, go back up to the top of that line if the trend continues. Um, and again, you can change that. So depending on the length of time that you're trading a stock, you know, you can fiddle with this and you might say, well, you know, let's keep it at seven days just so we can see what's happening, you know, with the stock, you know, in the immediate short term. And you can see in the, in the last seven days, it's been trending down, um, which kind of makes sense. But, you know, I want to look at stocks that, you know, what are they doing over the 14 to 30 day type period? And, you know, as long as it's sloping up, there's a, a good chance. But so um, what I'll do is I'll leave this one on 30 because that's the, you know, sort of bigger picture trend. But then I can hide it just so my chart's not, you know, completely messy and too hard to see. So again, that's just a very quick way that I might, you know, put some notes on a chart um, so that I can see, you know, what I think the opportunity is um, and, you know, how the stock's going. And um, I'd like to see a little bit more volume coming through, but, you know, I think this is not looking too bad for a trade. So I might give it, you know, one more day, see where it finishes up. And if it was open, you know, if it opened up high on the next day, um, then I think that I'd trade it. You know, I can obviously duck down and look at it on a 15 minute chart and see what's happening, you know, at a, at a much sort of closer up. You can see overall it's been going down, but it has had this little blip up today. Um, it sort of, you know, peaked a little bit, come back down. Um, and, you know, if you wanted to keep it on the 15 minute chart, you know, if it crossed over that, I don't know, let's pretend this is an area of resistance here. If it crossed over that $5.17 type mark, you know, there's a good chance that it might be a, um, you know, a buying opportunity it's going to run theoretically all the way up to this $5.92. So you could put in something like a rising buy and say, you know, if it gets to $5.18, you can see there's a bit of a gap here, closes the gap. You can say if it gets to, let's say, $5.18 on a rising buy, um, then, you know, buy the stock at market um, and then hang on to it and hope that it gets up to this $5.93. So, uh, you know, that could be a, another way of looking at, you know, entering and exiting this stock. So anyway, as I said, I just thought I'd share that. We're up to 13 minutes, so if you've made it this far, thank you very much, and I hope this has been uh, useful. Thank you.